president was very encouraging uh, to us to do the right thing for the country. Prosecutors allege the bank pushed customers into costly financial products they didn't need or ask for. They say employees created some two million ghost deposit and credit accounts under pressure to generate more sales. The president was very encouraging uh, to us to do the right thing for the country. Ken Wallman of Venice, California says he confronted his Wells Fargo branch after discovering 13 unauthorized accounts in his name. I went in with my big pile and I said, what is this? It's important that these, these companies uh, play by the rules, basically. You know, it just has to happen. Hello, welcome to Hells Fargo. What brings you in today? Hello, I would like to make a deposit into my checking account. That's great. Would you please slide your debit card for me? No, I said I want to make a deposit into my account. That's great. I just want you to slide your debit card so I can pull up your profile to try and sell you some shit you don't know you need yet. Oh, okay, that sounds great. I always want a 20-year-old to tell me how to manage my money. But I never got a debit card because I was a walk of a customer and the bankers did what I wanted them to, and not push shit on me I didn't want. Wow, you were a watch of a customer. That's great. I can probably sell you all new Wells Fargo accounts since we are Wells Fargo now. Wells Fargo. Number one, Wachovia was bigger than Wells Fargo. And number two, Wachovia had an agreement already in place with Citigroup. And somehow, well, Wells Fargo wound up with the company. Fargo checking accounts are so much better than Wachovia accounts. You are so nice, young man. Is there any way I can get $10 back with my deposit of 40000 please? Yes, you can. Thanks for your driver's license. Let me have a teller start your transaction so I can sell you some shit to keep you busy while she does your too minute transaction. You're not a teller? Why are you back there? Well, at Wells Fargo, they want the salespeople. I mean bankers behind the tellers to jump on any customer new or old for sales of a product. If you didn't want something but it was easy to send like a debit card, I would write down your info and send it to you. That sounds like a great business plan to piss off all your customers so they get mad and leave your bank. Well it's really the best system out to date. We get to piss off people all day long. Some of them buy shit just to shut us up while others will talk to the manager about what we do, but he will say we are doing our job by looking out for his bonus, I mean the customer's best interest. Yes I can tell that you are looking out for my best interest by making me mad and coming to your bank less often so I don't get sold every day, but only when I truly need to go to the bank. Oh well I forgot to tell you I will be calling you in a week to try and sell you some more shit, but first just sign here please. Okay. Thanks, I look forward to your call. And what is that I just signed? Well, because you have over $250,000 with us, I am going to set up a PM account for you to make you more money, but I will also use this same form to open more shit in the future when I can't meet my sales goals of three checking accounts per day since with the PM you get all your other accounts free. Wow, more money, you truly are looking out for me. You must be the best in the whole bank here. Yes, I am the best salesperson in the store. I mean bank, no wait store. 6,000 and some branches around the country. And stores. So store, sorry, stores. I, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll get it right. Yes, at Wells Fargo, this is a store. I am just waiting for them to change my title to salesman and take off this personal banker title. But I hear you use words today, and this is where I think the root of this problem is. Sales organization, retail sales, stores. I never ever in my life referred to my branch bank in Applewood, Colorado as a store. You don't sell Vegematics. You don't sell grapefruit. Oh, I will make you more money, but I will also send you three debit cards and open five way two saves. Thank you, young man. Would you please give me my $10 before you fuck me up the ass? I always like to be paid before I get screwed. That's how I got most of my money. Okay, here is your $10. Would you like a balance? No, wait, I am going to fuck with your account so much you won't know your balance if I gave it to you anyway. Has drained her bank account without her knowledge. How much money did he take? Over 8000 
Scone says the problem began in December when all sorts of charges started showing up on her bank statements. I looked at my accounts and I had so many ATMs and I don't never use the ATM. Port St. Lucie police say Anderson made a duplicate temporary debit card from Scones' account and got right to work. They say this is surveillance video of him using the card at a grocery store. This was personal. This was an employee of the bank in a position of trust. Okay, don't worry about it. I will be back next month to yell at you when I get the three debit cards and five new account statements. Sounds great. I will be here and I will have my manager say sorry about the mix-up. Now, police are still investigating. In fact, they say there are at least four other victims out there. As it stands now, Anderson faces 29 felony counts. That's just on the first charge with Mary Ann Scone. But in the back room, he will tell me what a great job I did getting all those accounts for his bonus. I will see you later. Okay, Sonny. Have a great day. The president was very encouraging uh, to us to do the right thing for the country. The president was very encouraging uh, to us to do the right thing for the country. Centers around a debit card, something many of us use every day. In this case, they say a bank employee created this identity theft by using a victim's card that she never saw. I thought he was a real a good guy. Marianne Scones is talking about Marlon Anderson, the Wells Fargo employee she says drained her bank account without her knowledge. We're from Massachusetts, Mr. Capuano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Stump. I want to thank you particularly for doing something here today that no other person has been able to do in the last four years. You have brought true bipartisanship to Congress. We're all together on this. We are not happy. The last couple, oh, they already started, but the last few minutes, they've been running a graphic in the back, and my colleague went through some of them. But I think it's important to know what some of the other things you have done, what they were. They weren't just fines. You screwed student loan holders, credit unions, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, mortgage holders, African Americans, Hispanics, healthcare workers, on and on and on. And by the way, I understand this isn't material. Just five months ago, you paid $1.2 billion in a fine. This is only 15% of that. Nah. Who cares? We'll pretend to be sorry. We'll fire some workers, and we'll get through this. You know where I heard that before? The guys who ran Enron. The guys who ran Arthur Anderson. Thought the same thing. We're not your problem. We can't criminally prosecute you. You can keep, hell, you're your own boss. You are the CEO and the chairman. Hold yourself to accountability. Oh my God, you've been bad. Oh no, you haven't. That's ridiculous. Your problem is coming. It's not today. You think today's tough? It's coming. When the prosecutors get a hold of you, you're going to have a lot of fun. So I want to thank you for that. And I want to ask you, you get the graphic up here. Do you know this guy? See, I'm not a real good researcher. I'm not a prosecutor. This is simple internet research. That's all I'm capable of doing. Google it. Wells Fargo. Boom. Whole bunch of stuff shoves up. This is Mr. Robert Holmes who apparently robbed your bank in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He did not use a weapon. He got caught. They got all the money back. He's in jail as we speak on a $750,000 bail. You, on the other hand, have run an enterprise that has a culture of corruption. You encourage subordinates to abuse existing customers 
by opening fake bank accounts. You charge those victims illegal fees, interest, and late charges. And then you send some of them to collection agencies because they didn't pay them. Then you fired 5,300 workers as if you care to cover everybody's tracks. In my opinion, you and your entire leadership team are clearly and unequivocally guilty of at least conspiracy to commit fraud, conspiracy to commit identity theft, clearly racketeering, which is something a lot of my friends know something about, and probably a dozen other crimes. Only simple question, what the heck's the difference between you and Mr. Holmes? Why shouldn't you be in jail? He didn't use a gun. You got the money back. I understand that his arraignment, he said he was sorry. What's the difference? Why shouldn't you be in jail right along with Mr. Holmes? The president was very encouraging uh, to us to do the right thing for the country.